Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and you might be able to see behind me, it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion, which is tropical houseplants. And hopefully if you're here, it might mean that this is one of your big passions as well, or something that at least you're getting into slowly. Now, today I want to talk about a very special plant, and this is a plant that started off as a propagation, which is now larger than the mother plant. This is the ginormous Begonia seismorii. And just to bring it in, just so you can have a look at the sheer size of this Begonia leaf, that's how large that leaf is. That's the size of it in comparison to my head. So a traditional Kaylee Ellen head test. And I know this is one of the Begonias that Rachel from Heart Shaped Leaves finally got her hands on recently, and I think that was, oh, it wasn't Logies in the States. I'm trying to remember now which plant store it is. If I remember, I'll put it up at the top there. But, uh, oh, that was it, Steve's Leaves. She got that from Steve Leaves recently. She's just done a video recently about that as well. And uh, let's talk a bit more about what makes this plant truly unique, definitely one of my most favorite, if maybe not my favorite begonia, even more so than my Bravurimosa. It's always had a very fond place in my heart. The mother plant that I'll show you in a minute is one of the few plants that I have named, and that is named Chewy from Chewbacca and Star Wars, for obvious reasons when I show you the back of this plant. And you might be able to see already the redness that you're seeing on the leaves, but then also what you might be able to see is quite how fuzzy and hairy those petioles are and the backsides of the leaves and also the leaves themselves. You might be able to see that there's a slight bit of hair that's growing there and that, believe it or not, is called a pubescence in horticultural terms. So very, very cool plant. Granted an acquired taste, not for everybody. <laughs> I think it's really cool. And this is this is Chewy 2.0. This is Chewy's progeny, essentially. But growing like mad. And this is a plant as well that is, I don't know if I mentioned this, this is a rhizomatous begonia, if I'm not mistaken. And I've had some challenges and sometimes rhizomatous begonias can be quite challenging for a lot of people to grow. Cane begonias like the Begonia Maculata Whitei and the, the Begonias that tend to be more upright with angel wing shaped leaves. Those tend to be a bit easier, these tend to be a bit trickier, but actually this specific one isn't that difficult, or at least I haven't found it that difficult in my care. Now, I was trying to remember back when I propagated this, it took a very long time, but this is one of the original Begonias that I propagated in soil using just the nerves of the leaves, not even the entire leaf, not a petiole, not a stem, and it took forever to root out. I had a lot of failure, most of the cuttings didn't take. Two cuttings I think took, and this is what's in here now, and what's growing to this size. But uh, since then I'm now propagating with either a petiole propagation, or even a full stem propagation, and it it roots out a lot quicker and it grows a lot faster. This one did take nearly two years to get to the size that it is now. But I'm alright with that. I mean, look at look at the sheer size of this. The other thing as well to know about this specific begonia, at least what I found in my care, is it's one of those begonias that it doesn't mind on the very rare occasion of going fully dry and then getting drenched. This actually is fully dry at the moment. We're having unseasonably warm days at the moment here in the UK, so I do need to water this. But it won't throw an almighty hissy fit like you might do with other begonias. I'm not saying let your begonias or even your begonia seismorii dry out fully and leave it for days on end and then water it. Yes, then you'll probably cause some damage because most rhizomatous begonias have got very, very fine hair-like root structures. So they can dry out and cause root rot and all of these things really, really quickly. But this is one that I found is tiny bit more resilient. So for a day, I found on the odd occasion, not all the time, I found that it doesn't harm it too, too much basically. The other thing that I found quite interesting about this plant, and let me show you what the mother plant looks like. This is the mother plant, and if you look at it in comparison, this is so much smaller in comparison. It's growing in a weird, janky way. 
but it's still doing relatively well. The other thing that I've noticed, and hopefully I'll be able to get a picture at the right time of the day to show you, is that there's a slight bluish cast to the leaves, very similar to the begonia pavonina, which everybody wanted at some point because it was a blue begonia, only to realize when they got it in their care that only at certain light levels did it have a slight blue cast and it was difficult to photograph and it's a very dull, just plain green leaf otherwise. This to me, that the fact that it's kind of got a bit of a blue cast is an added bonus, but there's a lot to like about this plant. Granted, it's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to like the fact that it's fuzzy or hairy, but very special and fond place in my heart. I got this if you're based in the UK or based in the Norfolk area in the UK, which is where I'm based. This was from Tabram Garden Centre, great, great garden centre. This was last year or two years ago, actually, now. They're always good at bringing in unusual plants. They've recently started bringing in more rare and uncommon plants at really reasonable prices as well. But uh, this is a plant that I saw from the pot, and I'm guessing that's where it was from, is from a plant nursery called Dibley's in the UK. And they deal a lot more with gazneriads, with begonias a lot of the time. And I've never bought anything directly from them. And based on this one plant that I got from them, I don't know whether or not actually on the mother plant, it might still have it. Yes, you might not be able to see the pot properly, but it says begonias. And on the other side, which is underneath all the foliage, it does say Dibley's. So based on that one plant alone, I would guess they're really good at bringing out quite a few begonias and doing quite well when it comes to growing them. So top tip. And that's something I would never even heard of that nursery. It was something I heard from Jane Perone on her podcast uh, on the ledge. And the blue hue, and if you want to learn a bit more about blue in plants, I do encourage you to also go and check out Matthew and Stephen on the Plant Daddy podcast as well. They did have an episode where they talked all about blue plants and I think Matthew had a few things to say about that. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about this plant. It's a relatively quick video today. I'm not going to go too much in about what I do for the care of this plant, but if you do want a care video, do let me know in the comments and I can always create that. In the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you've enjoyed and hopefully I shall see you here soon. Thanks. Bye.